The Thin Blue Line, directed by Errol Morris, portrays the murder of a police officer and the investigation and trial that follows. Here is some background on the case. Randall Adams was accused of shooting and killing police officer Robert Wood in November 1976 in Dallas, Texas. He was sentenced to life and given the death penalty at 28 years old. In the documentary, he claims that he is innocent and that Harris framed him. David Harris was with Adams on the night that Officer Wood was killed. He is not given time in prison, and he was only 16 years old at the time the crime was committed. The documentary focuses on their opposing stories. Adams and Harris have conflicting stories about the events surrounding the night that Officer Wood was shot and killed. Adams says that he ran out of gas and Harris picked him up. Unknown to Adams, Harris was fleeing his most recent crime scene. They smoked, drank, and even went to the movies together. After the movies, Adams claimed that he went back to the motel that he was staying in with his brother. Harris claims that Adams was driving him around when they were stopped by the police. When Officer Wood approached the car, Adams shot him twice and they drove off. The purpose of this documentary is to persuade the audience that Randall Adams is innocent and David Harris is guilty of committing murder. Another purpose is to inform the audience of the flaws of the justice system in Dallas County, Texas. The audience includes people who are interested in crimes in general, the investigation process of a crime, and the judicial process used to determine if someone is guilty or not. The film indicates that it is on Adams' side by negatively portraying Harris and showing the faulty and insubstantial evidence used to determine the verdict of the trial. The major argument of the documentary is that Randall Adams was wrongfully convicted of killing Officer Wood. The first supporting claim is that the evidence presented was faulty. The first example of this is through the conflicting stories of Adams and Harris. The second example is that Officer Wood's partner, Teresa Turco, never saw who pulled the trigger. She did not get out of the police car until the shots were fired. By this time, Adams and Harris's car was already speeding away. Her account was still used in the trial. The third example is that these witnesses did not see the murder happen. All of them drove by before the murder took place and saw the scene of Adams and Harris pulled over by the police. They only heard the shots fired afterward and did not see who shot the gun. Their testimonies were also used in the trial. A second supporting claim is that the Dallas County Justice System wrongfully convicted Adams and pinned the crime on him because Harris was ineligible for the death penalty due to his age. Adams was eligible for the death penalty at 28. The judge would not allow lawyers to talk about any of Harris's other crimes in the trial. He did not want to, quote, ruin a young man's life. Shrinks that were called in to analyze Adams's mental state reported that he would be a danger to society if released. However, these doctors worked for and were paid by the state of Texas. The structure of the film begins with interviews from Adams and Harris, each explaining their own story. Then it explains the murder of Officer Wood. After this, the film is fairly chronological with the events of the investigation leading up to the trial as well as the aftermath. One technique used was the repeated reenactment of the murder scene. In this scene, actors portrayed the scene where Officer Wood was shot. First, it shows the two cars, the police car and the car that held Adams and Harris. Officer Wood approached the car, and then he was shot twice. The scene shows him laying on the ground with the flashlight next to him broken. The scene also shows his partner's reaction. She was in the car drinking a milkshake. Once the shots were fired, she throws the milkshake into the air, it lands on the ground and splashes everywhere, 
and she gets out of the car and runs to shoot at the other car which is speeding away. This scene is repeated several times throughout the film to emphasize the murder. Other important techniques used include the direct interviews with Adams, Harris, the homicide detectives, the police detectives, prosecutors, friends, eyewitnesses, and the judge from the trial. There are close-up shots of important objects or scenes such as flashing police lights and the electric chair. During the last scene where Harris confesses, Morris uses an image of a tape recorder with a recording playing in the background of Harris's dialogue. Rhetorical strategies. The film strongly appeals to pathos through the use of music composed by Philip Glass. The music is dramatic, dark, and shows the tension, urgency, and confusion of the investigation and trial. Here is a clip. Appeals to pathos also include the reenactment of the murder scene. It is very dramatic, loud, and realistic. The documentary also uses colors to appeal to emotions. Neutral colors are used except for red and blue to convey the seriousness of the investigation as well as appeals to emotions such as anger and sadness. This can be seen in the title of the documentary where the words are in blue, except for the word blue, which is in red. Harris shows no remorse for the crimes he has committed, and he appears soulless in the film. The audience initially feels bad for him because Errol Morris shows clips of him and his brother who drowned when they were younger. Sympathy is evoked, but this changes after Harris confesses to the murder and other charges, including burglary, assault, and the murder of another man. Credibility is established through the use of interviews conducted with everyone involved in the investigation in the trial. Errol Morris himself is a credible director because of his career in filmmaking. The evidence of the investigation that is used in the trial is presented to the audience along with information about the trial verdict. This evidence appeals to logos. I think that this argument is valid because Randall Adams was released from prison due to the evidence brought to light from this documentary that proved his innocence. This documentary takes an interesting approach to the way they present Officer Wood. The documentary does not focus that much on Officer Wood or his life, even though he is the one who was murdered. I learned that a documentary can advocate for a specific side of an argument or a person, but at the same time, it can also accurately convey both sides of a situation, as seen in this film. I also learned that the that repetition can be used as a documentary technique to strongly communicate a point, as seen through the reenactment of the murder scene. Finally, I learned that the title of a documentary or any work that I analyze can have an important significance. In this case, the thin blue line is a symbol that commemorates fallen police officers and offers support for living ones. It also symbolizes the job of police officers who constantly put their lives on the line to protect others from danger and evil.